this is the fifth video on the topic moment of inertia in this video we will be discussing the moment of inertia values of basic figures in the previous videos we have studied how to derive the moment of inertia values of basic figures here i have compiled the formula for all the basic figures okay first we have the rectangle here in black ink you can see the rectangle the base is b the depth is d and in, with red pen i have marked the centroidal axis see this is the centroid and this is the centroidal y axis this is the centroidal x axis okay about this axis the moment of inertia value for this rectangle is b d cube by 12 about this axis the moment of inertia value for this rectangle is d b cube by 12 we already know that if you are considering an axis then the first term should be the side parallel to the axis considered so here if you are considering this axis the first term should be the side which is parallel to axis axis that is d first term is d here also it is the same thing this is the axis which is the side parallel to this axis it is b b side is parallel to this axis so it is b d cube by 12 so that is the case for a rectangle now for the rectangle if you have the axis passing through one of the sides the value is b d cube by 3 okay for this axis it will be d b cube by 3 because the side parallel to the axis is d so that term should be written first okay so uh, this is more important the moment of inertia values about centroidal axis is more important because we will be using this value when we apply parallel axis theorem okay so the next figure is a triangle here you can see a triangle the base is b the height is h and this is the cg okay now tell me what is the distance from this side to the cg what is the distance it is h by 3 this distance will be h by 3 okay so this is the centroid this is the centroidal axis which is parallel to the side b then the moment of inertia value of this triangle about this axis is b h cube by 36 the condition is that th this axis should be the centroidal axis and it should be parallel to the side b then the moment of inertia value is b h cube by 36 then you have another axis which is passing through the side b the moment of inertia value is b h cube by 12 okay now if you have a right angle triangle this is the cg you have centroidal x axis and centroidal y axis here also for this axis the moment of inertia value is b h cube by 36 are the conditions satisfied there are two conditions one is that this axis should be parallel to one side this axis is parallel to this side so first condition is satisfied second condition is that this axis should be the centroidal axis is it passing through the centroid yes if these two conditions are satisfied then you can apply the formula b h cube by 36 in the denominator you get you can write 36 okay similarly for this axis check whether the two conditions are satisfied what is the first condition first condition is that there should be a side parallel to this axis is there a side parallel to this axis yes the side is parallel to this axis now what is the second condition is it passing through the centroid of the triangle yes it is passing through the centroid so you can apply the formula hb cube by 36 okay now here also the first term should be the side which is parallel to the axis that is considered okay now the next figure it is circle for a circle we know that cg is at the center so the moment of inertia value about centroidal axis is pi d raised to 4 by 64 for this axis also it is pi d raised to 4 by 64 as the figure is symmetric where d is the diameter of the circle now if you have a hollow circle or a ring the diameter of the inner circle is small d and diameter of the outer circle is capital d so if that is the case then about the centroidal axis the moment of inertia value will be pi into d raised to 4 minus small d raised to 4 by 64 here it was just d here it is d raised to 4 by sorry d raised to 4 minus small d raised to 4 
where small d is the inner diameter and capital D is the outer diameter. Okay, so that is for hollow circle. Now for semicircle. This is very important. I like this one very much. So we have a semicircle. The CG at is at this point. What is the distance of CG from the straight side? It is 4 r by 3 pi. We have already studied this in the class. So from the straight side of the semicircle to the CG the distance is 4 r by 3 pi. So this is the CG. Now consider the axis passing through the CG and parallel to the straight side. So, so this is the axis. About this axis the moment of inertia value is 0 0.11 r is to 4. I repeat, for an axis which is passing through the centroid and parallel to the straight side of the semicircle, the moment of inertia value is 0 0.11 r is to 4. Okay. Now the other axis which is passing through the centroid, this axis is perpendicular to the straight side, the moment of inertia value is pi d raised to 4 by 128. You can compare this value with the value of the circle. For circle it was pi d raised to 4 by 64. Now here you have a semicircle, half of a circle, right? So half of this value is taken here, okay? You can just compare and study for remembering the values okay so about this axis the value of moment of inertia is pi d raised to 4 by 128 then we have one more axis the axis which is passing through the straight side of the semicircle for this axis also pi d raised to 4 by 128 is the moment of inertia now we have one more figure that is quarter circle here you have the quarter circle the radius is r and the diameter is d. This is the CG. What is the distance of CG from the straight side? What is this distance? It is again 4 r by 3 pi. Here also this is the straight side. This is the CG. This distance is 4 r by 3 pi. Okay. So this is the CG. If the axis is passing through the CG and if it is parallel to the straight side then the moment of inertia value for a quarter circle is 0 0.055 r is to 4. So here also this is the CG. The axis is parallel to the straight side. So the moment of inertia value is 0 0.055 r is to 4. <laughs> then if the axis is passing through the straight side of the quarter circle then the value is pi d raised to 4 by 256. We have studied that. Uh, the value for circle is pi d raised to 4 by 64. For semicircle, it was pi d raised to 4 by 128. And here, the value is pi d raised to 4 by 256. Okay. So, here also, the value is pi d raised to 4 by 256. Okay. Now, in this video, I have drawn the centroidal axis and the moment of inertia values about the centroidal axis with red pen. So that is more important. Let's focus on that. So that uh, we can apply those easily when we apply parallel axis theorem. Okay. This is a very important video. Please watch this video as many times as you can. Okay. Thank you.